Greetings, apostles. For white well-being from the Blue Ninja. And that was another edition of extreme anti-white musical programming that I was subjected to and all of us were. And I'm back in my hometown area in South Florida, West Palm Beach area. And I can remember right in these areas where I'm at right now, listening to that song by Michael Jackson when it first came out in like 1993. I was like 11 or 12 thinking, oh man, what a cool song. Not really thinking much about the message at all. Black or white, okay, whatever. We all just thought that was normal from birth, folks. From birth. When you are indoctrinated with something at birth, you have no chance whatsoever of knowing what's normal. We were born into a world that was already completely conquered and sick with anti-whiteism. We were born into it in the West as oppressed victims, as whites. We had no chance of knowing until people like the great Jason Kuna, Tim Murdoch, Raymond Foster, etc., etc., and, and others contributed to bringing us out of this funk. And so many of our people are still in this funk. Now, the one point I want to make about this is that that song, Black or White by Michael Jackson, is clearly about race. It even says in the song as a lyric, it's not about race. I'm not going to spend my life being a color and all that nonsense. That song is specifically about race. And the point I want to make about that is that the whole idea from for the anti-whites is to barrage us with all that racial stuff, but keep and keep whites from talking about it. The attacks have always been racial. And that's the one thing the anti-whites tell whites never to talk about. And what do they tell whites all the time? It's not about race. It's not racial. While they talk about race all the time themselves and continually attack us on the basis of race, specifically and explicitly. So they just say white man bad, white race is bad because of their race, blah, 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 all day long. And then when they're talking to whites, it's not about whites, it's not about race, white people. <coughs> That's the message they give to us, and only us, for so many years now. They're just, they've been brutally slitting our throats racially for so long. That people have gotten a little desensitized to the insanity. And they're always telling whites, it's not about that.
right? So it's as two-faced as you can get. So the, the, the point, the main point to make here is that just like Tim Murdoch says, we whites have to talk about race. We have to understand that it is about race and absolutely stop believing the lies the anti-whites have fed us. Most of us see miles through that. The whole key is to recognize that it is about race and for us whites to talk about it. That is the magical key that will unlock our salvation, folks. Whites talking about race in an effective and constructive way that works for our well-being. It has to be done carefully and With the right words, obviously. But it has to be done. So, just like Tim Murdoch says, the great white rabbit, or is the Avenger, the Euro rabbit. He says the whole, the whole, the whole uh, basis for anti-whiteism to have continued for so long is that whites do not talk about race and specifically not anti-whiteism. That is a golden rule for the anti-whites. That's the only way the anti-whiteism could ever continue. It always depended on whites not talking about race, essentially. Everyone else can talk about it except for whites. As long as whites don't talk about it, maybe they, maybe they, they don't even want whites to see it. But if some whites do see it, they sure don't want those whites talking about it, making a fuss and spreading it to others. That is the key that will undo the anti-white narrative. That is the tuning fork that will keep re vibrating to resonance and shatter the entire anti-white narrative. Once that starts going, that tuning fork, it will only spread and resonate. Anti-whites know this. That's the one rule. Everyone can talk about race except whites. As long as whites don't talk about race, as long as they don't talk about anti-whiteism, then the anti-whiteism, the white erasure, the oppression continues. That's why they put it in music. It's not about race. And then they turn around the next day on, on all other media and talk about how bad the white race is and how they need to be erased more, etc. <laughs> so it's very transparent. But the other big key, folks, that most of us are at is you got to talk about it. The next time you see something anti-white, Call it anti-white. That's what I'm going to challenge myself to do even more than I already have. I've taken a lot of opportunities boldly. I'm going to take even more. For example, Monday Night Football this week I caught a glimpse of and it had the phrase end racism. Uh on both end zones. Primetime Monday Night Football, NFL. And racism, as we know, is an anti-white slur. D 
denoting white people. So that means end white people. That is white erasure. So we got to say, next time I see something like that, I don't care who's, ar who's around, if it's not only strangers, I'm just going to blurt out and say, that is an anti-white slur. That is so anti-white. That is so disgustingly anti-white. Right there on TV. And racism, that's an anti-white slur, that's anti-white. I'm going to blurt that out next time I see something like that in a store. I've done it before. Usually it's to people. I've done it a few times just randomly to any listening ears. Blurt this stuff out, folks. Time to really, really get outside your comfort zone. So that's the challenge that I'm giving myself and everybody, each and every one of you out there, to always push yourself more, to call out anti-whiteism more and more and more. Because boy folks, the anti-whites, they got the they got the throttle on on high. Big time high for anti-whiteism. I mean, my gosh. I've been watching more TV than usual. Cable. Oh my gosh, folks. It's it's too much to even name. I mean, it's, it's really, really Twilight Zone, Clown World. I mean, you, you just don't see whites on commercials anymore at all, for one thing. Um, I mean, they got specials on, left and right, about the dark non-whites, constantly talking about how they're, quote, stereotyped. Prejudice, quote, R-A-C-I-S-M, of course, blah, blah, blah. The kicker, folks, is I even saw a commercial brand new the other day about so-called anti-Semitism on the rise. Brand new commercial. <laughs> folks, those those hats, especially the anti-whites, they're, they're in panic mode. They're hitting every button, firing every anti-white missile they have. They know their time is short. But they do have a lot of firepower still left, unfortunately. And they're just launching everything off. And it's, it's a crap show, as we all know, folks. A lot of flat coming our way each and every day. Call this stuff out, folks. This is emergency mode. If, if anyone is waiting for emergency time to really let it all fly, this is that time. <laughs> it's now or never. It's go time, folks. Everything is on the line, whether you realize it or not. So fight like your lives and your family and your entire race of people depend on it because it does amen and hallelujah long live the west